Hello everyone, reporting today for Fun Robotics Network, I'm Ab Haas, and with me here is none other than Team 17792, Amigos Droids from Brazil. They have been absolutely incredible this season, I've loved watching them on the field at MPI, just super, super fast, and there is so many unique things going on with this robot. No screws in the major construction of the robot, really fantastic claw, super fast extension, just so much going on, can't wait to jump into it on Behind the Bot. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Zutica Robotics offers durable, polished, and anodized aluminum channels now available in several different color options to customize your robot at Zutica.com slash robots. No rough edges and a versatile hole pattern allow for positioning at multiple angles. Teams in the U.S., you can request a free sample, apply for team grants, and register for 25% off at Zutica.com slash robots. Go ad free and access our videos earlier when you support fun with a membership through YouTube Join. For $4.99 a month USD, you can now watch most of our YouTube videos ad-free and gain early access to scheduled content with other options also available. Click the join button below to get started. All right, so I think the first thing we have to talk about, obviously, is the drivetrain. Just so many zip ties, no screws, but it's still so resilient. Walk us through the overview and then we'll get into the specifics. Okay, the idea here is because in Brazil there is a lot of expensive metal parts, so we decided to do it in another way with other metal parts or a screw. And to be as resistant as the other metal parts, we need to do a malleable robot instead of a rigid one. Because when the robot is malleable, it is able to deform, to dissipate the impacts and forces like that we have in the in a match. So we uh, change the screws for zip ties and the metal for polycarbonate. There is a material, uh, very malleable material. So we also apply spatial trusses. Let's turn the robot. Yeah. We also apply spatial trusses uh, on our uh, general chassis to be able to create the structure and then with the zip ties and the fittings we are able to uh, stretch a little bit during the match if the robot receives any kind of impact and then the form to do not break. This system is fully inspired by nature so as for example if we receive a punch in our face our muscles will deform to be able to like do not break our bones and we do the same thing right over here and that way to build robots is our constructive system called fast assembly structure yeah so lo lots of questions about that it's super super interesting as far as like maintenance goes do you often have to replace zip ties and stuff or is it like you put it on the beginning of the season and it's good for the rest of the season uh it like uh it is variable because we have some zip ties that we put it here in the beginning of the, the season and we don't need to, to move it because there is some parts that structure parts that we don't need to maintain but there is some uh, zip ties that we need to we need to cut to maintain the robot but it's, it's also very fast because for example if I want to get access to the wheels I just need to cut some zip ties remove this plate and then I can maintain it very very fast and then when we uh, finish the maintenance I can go back to this place and put new zip ties we yeah. need to change this one and the same the, the design of the robot is uh, like strategically designed to be able to maintain some specific parts that are very fast to remove and put it again yeah and as far as a uh, cost perspective is concerned do you have an estimate of like how much you're saving by making a drivetrain using like this fast structure design method as compared to like a traditional parallel plate aluminum drivetrain uh, 10 times. 10 times, okay. Ten times. Yeah. I see. Yeah, I guess like typical chassis are like three, four hundred dollars or yeah, so. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, uh, like cutting this thing is less than uh, ten dollars in Brazil, so it's very... Okay, nice. very cool. Yeah. Now, jumping into the intake, I want to start with the claw. You guys have a very, very unique claw and seeing it up close has always made me wonder how it works. So walk us through the overall design and then I have a ton of specific questions. Okay, overall design. The idea of the robot is to be as simple as possible, to score very fast and to not spend much time designing the robot and like uh, improving it. So we develop a claw with four independent fingers using only one sample. So because of the four independent fingers, we can collect the samples in any direction inside the submersible zone. So uh, we will show to you guys so as the claw is right over here, we can collect it in any direction. So if the sample is in another position, we can also collect it. And as we have a rubber band closing the claw, uh, I think you would prefer to show here. As it is only one rubber band closing the claw, the fingers are able to deform according to the sample orientation. So three fingers can stay closed and one can stay open. Uh, the motors does doesn't like make any kind of effort closing the claw. 
yeah, that that's super innovative. And as far as prototyping is concerned, what do you think were some of the biggest challenges you had to overcome when coming up with this design? Uh, I think it is a new design, so there isn't anything on the market like that. So we need to develop every part of the claw. Uh, also have like a good finger uh, geometry was a very difficult part because it is a thin finger. So we need to be able to get samples with a thin finger and keep it on the claw. So uh, came up with this design of finger was one of the challenge. And at the same time, get the claw like strong for, to be able to withstand the submersible impact that we yeah. know that have a lot. So to do that, we also keep the malleability of the system. So as you can see, the whole claw is <laughs> malleable so when there is any robot on the submersible that hit our claw it is able to deform a little bit to do not break uh i don't know if you guys will be able to see here but the claw like the uh, axle arm is only tied with zip ties there is no screw rules on the the, the top of the uh, yeah on, on the box tube yeah that, yeah that is just so cool now Going back a little bit further into the box tube, I see also more zip ties there. I see, you know, some screws for the bearings, which is completely understandable. But the zip ties here, did you have any trouble with that? Or did it, is it just really holding it super secure, no slipping, anything like that? Any kind of trouble. Uh, actually, we have uh, some uh, advantages with it because this boxing tube was very difficult to develop and there was a lot of iterations, a lot of uh, errors doing it and a lot of like damage that we had inside it. So because of the zip ties, we were able to like to uh, disassemble it, unassemble it very fast. So we could maintain it very fast too. So iterate a lot of times. Awesome. Yeah. Now talking about the hang hook down here, just kind of moving backwards, walk us through how it works, how you use it. Perfect. So on our nationals, we are, were only hang with uh, on the second stage with this hook. Uh, initially, it doesn't have this rubber band. It was just moving because we need to, uh, we don't need to, uh, don't want to angulate the whole robot, just the arm. So because it is move like uh, movable, it is able to, the robot can stay uh, horizontal when the robot is hanging. But after the nationals, we decide to apply the third level hang with this rubber band. So the first stage keep being with this hook. It, it, it lift the, the robot from the ground and at the same time inclinate it. So these vipers can uh, get the third bar and pu uh, pull the robot to the third level ascent and this hook come to the original position. Awesome, yeah. And now I want to talk a little bit about the extension, uh, specifically in the intake. I mean, you can see how fast you guys move in and out with that extension. When you are driving, do you by default push it all the way out? Do you extend all the way and then move your drive train or are you moving your extension? Uh, we usually prefer to move the drive train. We have three different uh, like distances of the, you can extend, three different extensions. Like this is our, actually the battery is a little bit low. So this is the third uh, extension. So we have three different uh, sizes and then we move the chest to, because of the claw, it's better to move chests and then just collect it. Yeah, awesome. And then as far as the color sensor is concerned, are you using that for any autonomous intaking or only to verify what color you have? We use the color sensor only on autonomous to check if the sample was collected in submersible. And it's just use the rain sensor that is inside of it to check if the sample was collected or not. Because we check, uh, we focus on collecting just yellow samples to be sure that we're not going to collect the, uh, another alias color. Yeah, and so to detect which samples to pick up, is that using the limelight over here or is it a different method in autonomous? Yes, use the limelight with a neuro detection um, kind of object detection. And it's, like I said, detects just the yellow samples. And we use an interpolation function to extend the arm in the exact position so we can grab it like in the first try. But the color sensor will confirm it. Awesome. Yeah, I want to talk a little bit now about the pivot for the arm as a whole. You know, walk me through how you're using the zip ties and everything to hold all of that together while keeping it very robust. OK, so let's go. I think we need to turn off it so I, I, I'm able to move it. Uh, in general, for the pivot, we have zip ties tying the, the, the whole arm. There is no screws like inside the, the, the tubing. It's just pressure of the zip ties. At the same time, uh, we have some zip ties on the tube to like uh, keep the tension of the ropes. We have uh, I, I forgot the name of this. Uh, spring. Spring. Yeah. We have a spring here, but to be able to control each one of the stat ropes, we use zip ties. Uh, here, we also tie this uh, this part with zip ties to 
the only screws that we use is to uh, transfer the motor rotation for it. And also the tower that support this rotational part is made of zip ties too. We just need to tie the, the bearings that we have here to support the axle. Uh, I think so. Yeah, awesome. Amigos Droids, thank you guys so much. I mean, this is just such a unique robot. I'm really, really glad we could talk about it, show everybody, you know, I hope in the future we have more flexible and malleable designs as you guys have been talking about. Reporting for Fun Robotics Network, I'm Ab Haas, and this is Team 17792, Amigos Droids. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell to stay up to date on future fun videos. Judica Robotics offers durable, polished, and anodized aluminum channels now available in several different color options to customize your robot at studica.com slash robots. No rough edges and a versatile hole pattern allow for positioning at multiple angles. Teams in the U.S., you can request a free sample, apply for team grants, and register for 25% off at studica.com slash robots. Go ad free and access our videos earlier when you support fun with a membership through YouTube Join. For $4.99 a month USD, you can now watch most of our YouTube videos ad-free and gain early access to scheduled content with other options also available. Click the join button below to get started.